the question is, is this worth $110 versus this being worth $18? Okay, gang, today we are going to answer the age-old question. In the world of massage guns, what do you get for $70 versus $110 versus $18 for a massage gun? What in the world? Let's dig in and find out exactly what we have here. I think this is going to be interesting. What's up, gang? Darren Starr here, Five Star Physique, coming at you. We're gonna do a product review and comparison here. This whole video came about because the fine folks at Bob and Brad, which I only recently learned is the name of two physical therapists as well as a company that uh, makes and sells physical therapy-related products, reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in reviewing their new C2, I believe it is called, massage gun. And being a massage gun enthusiast and already being the proud owner of one myself, I said, sure, why not? I'd love to. This is not a sponsored review. They did send me this product, but I also thought about like, you know, how can I do a review that's gonna be as fair as possible to their product, but also to you? Because nobody wants to watch a 20 minute or however long this video is going to be commercial for a product. What I thought I would do, I did a little bit of research, thought about the one that I have here myself as well, and I went on Amazon and searched and found that you can get a massage gun for $18. So my question now is, what does $18 get you versus $110? And we're gonna dig in right now and find out. For starters also, let's talk about my massage gun here. This thing I've had for about three years. I got this off Amazon. This is a Toloco brand. I think I paid $90 for this. I looked at it once and it was down to 70. And now there's an updated version of this one available for 45. I really enjoyed it for the time that I had it until right now when it is a dead piece of garbage. So you can take it from a full battery charge where it's been sitting there and charging for a day and use it for about three seconds before it goes to an empty battery. So it is worthless. And so therefore the one question that I can't answer in the course of this review, because that took a few years for that issue you to develop is what is battery life going to be on these? I'm going to try and answer everything else, but what I can tell you is I'm just expecting that a cheaper product may have issues with battery life. I'm just going to say that right out. It doesn't mean that the more expensive one does not. So that is always a concern with anything rechargeable. How many times you're going to be able to charge it before the thing just up and dies on you? First thing I want to do is just a little unboxing and first impressions. Uh, this thing has been here for a couple of weeks. Actually, this thing just showed up yesterday. I was waiting for this to arrive before we dive in. Let's do it. Let's, uh, I've not, let's break the seal on this guy and see what we got in here. So first of all, just packaging, you know, this looks like an OEM product <laughs> that, and this looks like an actual retail product. Um, is that worth anything? I don't know. Not to me personally. So we pull this out and what do we have? It is in a bag and inside the bag is a little container. Cool. The Toloco that I had had a case that was similar to this. I never used it actually. It was just a way to keep everything organized. Inside this we have all the stuff. So there's the actual massage gun itself. There are a handful of attachments. There is some documentation. There is a USB cable for charging. This is a USB A to USB C cable. So this is universal, which is nice. And then uh, what look like some replacement grommets. The attachments on this one, there's the ball attachment. There is what I would call the thumb attachment. This thing is kind of air-based attachment. You, this got a little bit of feel and some squish to it. This attachment, this little like mini pitchfork is for going around the spine to get the spinal erectors on the sides. This gun has an attachment that supposedly supplies heat, hot or cold, which is very cool. I'm not a fan of ice therapy based on everything that I've read and kind of the evolving science in that over the past few years. But heat therapy would be fascinating because I've often wanted to get grab a heating pad and throw it on something. And so if I have a massage gun, that can, I, I don't know if this provides any kind of massage work or if it's just heat or cold. I don't know if this has like a pounding action that goes um, with it or not. So we'll dig in on that. I am encouraged by the fact that it has a universal charging cable. The Tolico gun that I had before was some kind of proprietary barrel connector. And so if I couldn't find that thing, which happened a little bit, then I was just SOL. This thing, wh what brand is this? I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read this. This is some, I don't know, guarantee this is made in China. So we have not quite as fancy here, but there is a, Warranty card thing. Welcome to join our VIP membership. Okay, I might take a pass on that. Major anterior muscles, if you want a chart. Trigger point therapy for myofascial pain. This guy looks like he's ready to start a fight. Very interesting. And what do we have in here? Method of application, okay. This is really just like a list of 
things. I don't know how useful or practical this is. Same universal charging cable here. This one looks shorter, but it says USB-A to USB-C, so universal applications there. And then we have two little baggies and no carrying case with this one. This thing is physically um, a little bit larger in comparison. I would consider that a downside unless there is a power difference that goes with it. We shall see. And then this other little bag, this, this one really looks much more like a hair dryer than anything else. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. The attachments that come with this one, this will be loud. Definitely a wider array of attachments here. Things that are the same, the ball attachment, the spinal attachment, the thumb, this does not have the hot cold. This does not look like it has the compressive air attachment. It does have something that's a little bit more rounded on the tip there, if you can see that. This one is more like a finger attachment as opposed to a thumb for digging into specific areas. This is the one that was my favorite on the old gun. So this is for going, uh, for me, this made more sense to use on the quad, which is the muscle group that I would typically be most aggressive with using the massage gun. Um, it just, it matches the, the curvature of a leg really well. And so you could get much more surface area all at once. I don't know that I like the design of this attachment as much as the one that came with my previous one. I also wonder if these have any kind of universal mount. No, these are definitely different sizes. This looks like some kind of a spade or a wedge attachment. I'm not even sure what that would be for. This is the same thing, but it looks pokier. And then there's a couple of grommets in here with this as well. Oh, and what do we call that? A bishop? <laughs> Something like that. No idea what that is or what this is for. So some of these are just so similar. Like, what's the difference realistically between these two? One of them's rounded at the tip, one's flat. More attachments is not always better. I find that unless you're a really well-trained physical therapist or massage therapist, you're probably gonna end up using one or two of these attachments at most. And so I kind of like the more limited selection with the Bob and Brad kit here just because it has the stuff that I want. I do wish that it came with something like this, which is, I'm gonna call it the quad attachment. That's the thing where I, I could just sit in a chair with that for 30 minutes and just go to town. All right, let's see what we got here. If we turn these things on, I just wanna do a first impression. The first question right out of the gate is, can I operate this thing without using the manual? And does it come with any kind of a charge already? If not, this might be a really short section to the video here. Okay, I push the button here, nothing happens. Oh, there we go. Okay, it just comes on. That's all there is to it, okay? So I can't see any kind of illumination or anything like that. It just says the number one on the back. And then it goes up to two, it goes up to three, four, five, and then back to zero or off. It looks at first glance, so it was a long press to turn it on. I'm assuming it's a long press to turn it off. Yep. So fairly intuitive, um, not, a lot of, uh, not a lot of settings on this thing, which I'm okay with, that's fine. Um, so if we push this thing in here, okay, what the fuck? Okay, so you, some good suction in there. So I will read the manual at some point. I'm just trying to get first impressions here and see what I can get without it. From here, you just take this guy, you put it right in there and you push it in. And I find if I twist it a little bit, it kind of locks in place pretty well. So it's not going anywhere at that point. So now we'll turn it on. It immediately goes on to number one. And when you turn it on, it doesn't default to zero. Like it just starts going right away. Test it on the leg here a little bit. Number two, three, four. Man, I tell you what, I've been waiting to do this review for a long time. Oh God. My quads are so tight, like I stretch them, I really need to see a massage therapist. So I've been dying to do this review, but I've been keeping these things in the box until this review because I wanted this to be an actual unboxing and first impressions. I didn't want to cheat. So now I think the rest of this review might just be like me hitting my quads with this massage gun. Holy crap, oh my God. Okay, and then number five, and then back to zero. One thing that I would say, and this looks like it's a charging indicator down here, it has the four LEDs, so I'm assuming that's gonna go down as the battery charge goes down as well. Very simple to operate, not a lot to it. It would be nice if there were maybe two buttons for a power increase and power decrease. So if I was at three and I'm like, ooh, I wanna go back down to two, I don't have to press it five times to go four, five, zero, one, two. If it could just go down, that might be kinda nice. I was gonna say the Toloco gun that I had down on the floor there right now, gave me a battery readout as a percentage. So it would say 99, but it was fairly useless because it would say 99 until it said 80. And then it would say 80 until it said 60. So the four dots here at the bottom are every bit as useful as that was. So I'm totally fine with that. That's good. Big picture, you'll know if you've got enough of a charge. Operational noise, um, you can hear how loud I'm talking right now. And so if I turn it up to five, max power. I mean, it's not silent, but it doesn't seem objectionable to me. So let's take a look at the other one, the no-name $18 massage gun slash hair dryer. Um, which has a little protective thing on it. We'll pull that off. And we'll go with the ball attachment here as well. And same thing. 
just goes on and a little bit of a twist gets it right in place there. There are three buttons on this guy. So there's a center button that is obviously indicative of power. And then there is a plus and a minus on this one. So the $18 massage gun already has one little bit of functionality that I kind of wanted out of the other one, which is to say I can increase or decrease the power, assuming that this doesn't blow up as soon as I turn it on. So let's see what happens. And it looks like this is the interface, kind of like what I would see before, where it says zero, zero, which I think is an indicator of the power level, and then 60, which I think is an indicator of the battery level. Let's turn it on. Let's go up. It's one, two. How high does it go? Jeez Louise goes up to 30. Now you might be saying, well, this goes up to 30. The Bob and Brad one only goes up to five. Yeah, but the thing is, I think this, I think it's the same max speed probably. We'll find that out here momentarily. It just, it takes me 30 presses to get up there as opposed to five on the other one. So I would rather not have closer to infinite graduations of power. Just give me a one, two, three, four, five. I kind of like that. The old massage gun had 12 steps, which, you know, I never really went above six or seven on that. Let's take it up. Let's go to like 10 for starters here. So immediately there's like a power drag as soon as it touches me. If, if I shut up for a second, you'll hear it. Let me, let me turn this thing up a little bit. It does go up and down, which is nice. I do like that. So we're now we're at 20 out of 30. This is two thirds power. You can hear it and I'll shut up in a second here and then listen to the change in power, the motor hum as, I, as it contacts my leg. I, if I push hard enough, I can make it stop completely. It's a pretty weak motor in this thing, comparatively. If I crank it all the way up to 30, there's still, still quite a bit of drag when I hit that down. So the question is, at a power level of 30, I'm kind of getting accustomed to how this feels here. Okay, so we'll turn that off. Go back to the Bob and Brad gun here. Turn that on, take it up to five. I mean, this thing is probably twice as powerful, realistically. <laughs> and li listen again, listen to the hum of the motor. This is not on anything. And then as it touches me, like there's no power drag on it at all. Like the harder I push on this, the more it hurts. Like it doesn't feel like the motor is dragging at all. Like much higher quality motor on this thing. Uh, not surprisingly, the $18 massage gun um, feels like it's worth about $18. <laughs> you know, first impressions here, because um, that's what we're gonna do, because it could be like, I don't know, maybe I plug this thing into the USB charger and my power strip lights on fire and everything dies. I don't know, I kind of doubt it, but you never know. We'll find out shortly in the next phase of this video. I would love it if there were power up and power down buttons on this, but this feels like a high quality motor in a high quality device. This thing feels more like a toy that a kid would use. The question is, is this worth $110 versus this being worth $18. I'm not the cheapest bastard in the world, but I'm always gonna look at the $18 option. I'm glad I did. I would never recommend this to anybody. Like th this is something like, if you can apply at max power on this thing, if you can apply just a reasonable amount of pressure to your leg and have the thing completely stop because the motor just isn't hard enough to continue through that kind of pressure, that thing is worthless. Like this might be good for um, you know a geriatric population who needs to just get a little bit of some kind of like light level relief, but for any kind of an athlete that needs some tissue work and they, they want to be able to kind of carry themselves from one massage session to the next and just be able to kind of do a little bit of manual therapy in between. Like I would never use this in a million years. This is just a low quality piece of garbage. This thing feels like a real device. It also has just a little bit more weight to it. It feels more serious. This thing really feels like a hair dryer that has a weak ass motor in it. Like it, you know, it doesn't really have much weight to it at all. I wanna play around with the other attachments a little bit. I'm gonna play around with battery life and charging time. So this is not the final word, but let's take that for now and come back. Okay, and after a little bit of product testing, we are back in action here, and I'm a little bit more informed to kind of flesh out the remaining details on what we're looking at here. I mentioned there were a couple of these grommets. Each of these attachments already has one on it. These are just replacements um, for if one of those comes off, breaks, or gets lost, or something like that. A couple other things, the Bob and Brad documentation here, it's really good, so it explains the, the usage of everything. It was pretty easy to figure this thing out in real time. It wasn't too much of a stretch. The thing is pretty intuitive. What, uh, what I did notice just in charging it, um, this thing came 
came at like about 80% charge. This one was about 60% charge. They're both a little slow to charge. I didn't get the total time on it. They last for a long time on a charge. So I did do a test where I let them run for a while. The problem is they only run for about eight or nine minutes continuously and then they shut themselves off. Like I did that with both of these and when coming back on, they still both report at full battery power. So it wasn't a battery issue. I think it's just, just turn themselves off after you know a certain number of minutes of use. Noise comparison between the two. Let's listen to them here on full strength. So I will start with the Bob and Brad. Turn it on, cycle it up to level five. It's a little bit more of a high-pitched whine. I don't really have a problem with it. If we add this one into the mix now and put it on level 30. This one's definitely a little more rattly feeling overall. The weight in your hand, this one feels more solid. I could get a lot more vibrational feedback in the hand from the less expensive option. This one just feels a little bit more insulated. The handle is a little bit more comfortable and just has a little bit more of a natural grip to it as well. The documentation for this thing is interesting. I might do some scans on this and show them on screen, but it gives you directions for like, you know, chest. Here's a diagram of the pectoral and it gives you recommendations for what attachment to use. And it gives you, it draws a line, like go from point A to point B, do it for this long using this attachment, et cetera, which I think is kind of nice. So you can tell that this was put together by a couple of physical therapists who you know, are accustomed to doing this stuff and they know how a lot of people will probably get this stuff wrong. What I did notice, however, that I think is kind of curious is I think almost every muscle group that they show in here, except for glutes, that's the only exception. It says to use the ball head. And for glutes, it says use the flat head which kind of begs the question, why are these all in here? I mean, I'm assuming they all have some kind of a purpose, but it doesn't say anything about spinal erectors, which is what you would use this one for. It doesn't give any guidance as to what this compressive, this air uh, filled one would be useful for. So I actually want to try that thing right now and see what it feels like, because I've never tried it before. I don't know, I don't know what to expect from this thing. I'll go with the forearm just so we can see it in action. I mean, I'm kind of expecting it to feel like airy or cushiony or something like that. It's not, I mean, it feels rubbery. This, this particular attachment, if we look at it a little bit more closely, it is like a, a soft rubbery surface that has some give to it, as opposed to the rest of these, which are all hard plastic. The ball attachment is like super, super rigid foam. I'm not sure I could really distinguish between the rubber and the foam on my body though, as I'm doing it. So uh, really, I don't, I don't get the, the air cushion side of this. Like I'm not feeling anything super cushiony when I do this which is not a problem with the gun. It might just be something with like, you know, my perception of how it feels. I'm not sure what the purpose of the attachment is though. Like how, how is this different from the ball attachment? Well, one thing I can say about the foam, the, the rigid foam ball, is that it doesn't really glide across the skin quite as well. Like that air cushion attachment did have a little bit more glide to it. That might be part of it. And my forearm really needs this. <laughs> I guess one of the primary take home points that I can go ahead and spoil here, I mean, this was the premise behind the review. I just don't see this thing as being a valid tool at all, th this cheap thing here. For $17, you get what you pay for. And I mean, you could, here's the thing. You could go to Chipotle and get lunch or you can buy a massage gun. The Chipotle is gonna take you farther than this thing will. There are other options that I saw on Amazon that were in the 20, 25, $30 range. I would expect a similar outcome from that. Now, the gun that I have down here, the newer version of that is, it, it's now in like the 40 to $45 range. And honestly, that thing served me well. The problem is just the battery crapped out. Now, I can't speak with any accuracy as to whether that would happen to this or that. I didn't use it a lot. So it's not like it went through a ton of cycles or anything like that. I used it a fair amount. I was always worried about it running low. So once it got down to like it was reporting 60% battery, I would charge it back up. So maybe the lithium ion battery in there is just older technology and it's sensitive to that. Those problems have been resolved with current modern batteries. So it shouldn't really be an issue. Um, but that thing just gave out to the point where on a full charge, it would last four seconds. So, or what it reported as a full charge would only last four seconds. The other thing that I'm really curious to try out is this hot and cold attachment here. This uh, comes specifically with the Bob and Brad gun. I've seen other massage guns that have these as well. I didn't notice anything that was in this same price range that had this feature, which I think is kind of curious. So I want to test it out here and see how it feels. So it's some kind of like reflective chrome surface on there. Interesting. One thing I will, will say is that this thing has its own USB charging port on it. Like the attachment needs to be charged as well as the gun. One thing that I would have loved to have seen this come with would be two USB cords so that I could charge them both at the same time 
or one USB port that had like two USB-C heads so that I could, with one cable, charge both of these. There may be electrical limitations that prevent that from happening. Um, it would probably increase the charging time because you've got the same amperage being divided to two sources, so that might be an issue there. But having two cables just so that I, you know, I had to hunt down another cable of my own and use a different hub over here to charge this thing, if it was all together, that would have been nice. So if I squeeze this guy in here. There's two buttons on this, presumably for hot and for cold. I can kind of see like one of them has like three little lines that look like wavy lines indicating heat. And one of them looks like a snowflake indicating cold. It would be nice if, cause my, my eyes clearly are not the best. And in this light, especially, it's really hard to read. And I would love it if it was just a little bit more obvious. If I press one, you can see the heat icon lights up orange. And if I press the other one, is there a color differential? There's a fan inside, and now the little snowflake icon kicks on green, so you know what it's doing. So, so I'm just gonna apply this directly to forearm here. I can feel it getting a little colder right now. I would not use it for this. Um, also, this thing does not really move across the skin very well, so you would wanna put this in like one specific area. Okay, now it's getting really cold. I won't lie, I came into this review with a hope, and the hope was gonna be that this cheap massage gun held its own against this thing, um, because that would have been newsworthy and noteworthy. Um, it absolutely did not happen. <laughs> so if I had any kind of interest as an unbiased reviewer, it would have been for that. So I'm a little disappointed just because this played out exactly as I would expect it to play out. So this is interesting. Like it's not, it got cold. It's not like super, super freezing or anything like that, but it's, you know, it's interesting. So we're going to shut that off. I'm listening for it. I'm going to see, because there's, you can hear there's a fan inside. Okay, just shut off. There's a fan inside of it. So um, that's um, presumably what's generating the, uh, the temperature change. So if I go for the heat, so now let's see how, uh, how long it takes. To, okay, it's already hot. <laughs> like the, wow, that, that temperature change was amazingly fast. <laughs> not what I was expecting. <laughs> but yeah, this is, this is quite warm. So let me try a different area, one that hasn't been. Yeah, the leg is a little less sensitive. It's not feeling it as much, but yeah, yeah, I can feel it. Yeah, it's definitely there. Application for this, honestly, whenever I have an area that I feel like I want to ice, it's always going to be like my neck trap area or my back, which the back would be difficult to get myself. My neck or my trap, like I could get that if we got to get under here. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely feel it. The question is, would this be more effective than using some kind of other heating device? Is the heating attachment on a massage gun gimmicky or not? The other thing I just realized is I didn't actually try turning on the massage gun. Like I'm assuming this works with it in there, right? Now it moves. It's funny, I just put the cold attachment on there and I forget it's a massage gun and you can actually still do this. That's an interesting sensation. So now it kind of acts like um, the compressive air thing, like a mix between that and the ball except it's, I would hesitate to say hot, it's very warm. And it does, it is kind of like a therapeutic level of warmth, kind of like a heating pad that only goes up to like level three out of five. If we go back to ice, yeah, the temperature change on this is so cool, like it's already cool again. I was, I was about to say, I'm not sure if this hot and cold attachment is just gimmicky or what, but I kind of dig it. I, kind of, I could see myself using this thing, absolutely, 100%. How would I compare this to the other massage gun that I had? Uh, very comparable. Um, you know, again, like I said before, I would love it if it had like an increase and decrease speed button as opposed to just the one. The weight is good. It's a little bit smaller and more compact, which is great. It has fewer attachments. Like my other one, I only had one. Like I, didn't, I barely ever even used the ball attachment. I just used that one crescent shaped attachment on my leg for just about everything. I would use this hot and cold attachment. I would use the ball attachment. I kind of like this, this air cushion attachment as well. I have no need for the spinal attachment or the point attachment, as they might call it. You know, it only comes with five. I would use three of them. I think that's pretty good. I think my old gun came with like 12, of which I used one and a half. Biggest complaints. I would love an extra button on the back, maybe two for power, increase, decrease speed. I would love an extra USB cable or a forked cable to be able to charge this head and the gun at the same time in case they were both low on juice. But that's about it. Otherwise, I think for the price, you're getting a lot of bang for the buck with this thing. I am pretty impressed. I truly am. I think the days of spending two or three hundred dollars for a Theragun are long gone. Um, I think when you can get something like this for one hundred and ten dollars, that's comparable in just about every way. Um, you know, the motor is as strong as you might need, realistically, unless you need something really, really industrial strength. Uh, as we've noticed here, 
you do get you do get what you pay for. So for seventeen dollars, you get something that would be useful on you know somebody who has osteoporosis maybe, and they don't want to break any bones. Um, that motor is not going to do that. This one won't either, realistically. But it's one just has a lot more force, and regardless of the force you apply, you can't really slow down the motor. This is sufficient for me. I dig it. I'm going to use this thing. I'm going to stick it in my gym bag, take it as part of my pre um, pre workout warm up routine, especially on leg day, and also like my lats are feeling kind of tight. So just being able to hit this not with this attachment, but hit the lats before warming up would be good. It's not a substitute for stretching and it's not a substitute for direct massage work, but if you're gonna use this to supplement those things, it's great. That's true of any massage gun. And if you're looking for one, this is one that I would recommend as much as anything. If you were going to go for a more budget option, the newer version of the Tolico, one that you can find off Amazon, would be a reasonable bet to place. Like, how long is that thing gonna last? I don't know, but this thing, um, I feel, uh, and again, it's a, it's a completely unknown quantity as far as you know longevity for something like this. Um, it just needs to be around for longer and get used more heavily by a lot of people, and that's when those issues come out. So time will tell on that, but out of the box, it's an impressive product, has a good weight, very comfortable, good feature set, couple of little flaws, nothing major. I'll use this myself and uh, get a lot of mileage out of it for sure.